sit here and say they are Christian women while you do your makeup, you dye your hair, you have your hair in elaborate hairstyles, and while you're wearing jewelry is absolutely bizarre to me. The fact that you could sit here and claim to be a Christian but clearly you've never even read Timothy is baffling. Like that's in the New Testament and you haven't even read it. And see. Now I'm sure you've heard someone say things along those lines and sadly they were not joking. So today we're going to talk about biblical modesty. First, let's talk about how modesty has different meanings depending on the context in which it's used. Modesty can mean the quality of state or being unassuming or moderate in the estimation of one's own abilities, though just not being super prideful. It can also mean the quality of being relative or moderate, limited, or small in amount, rate, or level. In this sense, it could mean modest in the amount of something, so a modest amount of bread would be like that one little Mickey Mouse cartoon. <laughs> and lastly, modest can mean a behavior, manner, or appearance intended to avoid improperty or indecency. That one meaning not wearing things for the purpose of getting attention from people and also not wearing things that are inappropriate given the setting. Like wearing a bikini at the beach is fine, but to a funeral is... Now that we have that in our head, let's go to the verse everyone famously takes out of context. 1 Timothy 2, 9. The yellow part is what we're reading first, then pink is when we're going to add context. So starting at 9, I also want the women to dress modesty, with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes. Like people tend to do, they pretend like that verse is just sitting alone in an abyss of absolutely nothing else and there's no context to it whatsoever and then they'll just be like women who wear jewelry or do their hair or da -da -da, are immodest but let's add some context starting at eight therefore i want the men everywhere to pray lifting up holy hands without anger and disputing i also want the women to dress modesty with decency propriety adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship god so he's saying, I want them to dress with modesty, not with how they adorn themselves, but with how they act. Notice how it goes from outward appearance, like elaborate hairstyles, makeup, da 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 to then good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. It goes from the way they look to the way they act. Given the context of it, he's not saying that like dressing up and doing things like that is bad. He's saying if that's how you find your value, that's an issue. Your value comes from who you are, meaning what you do. You judge someone based off their fruit. That's what the Bible says. So for judging based off fruit, fruit is actions. The way that you treat people is a fruit. Joy is a fruit of the spirit, etc., etc. So to sit here and act like the way that you look is a fruit doesn't make sense. The Bible literally flat out states to not judge based off appearance. 1 Samuel 16, 7, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. In 7, 24, Jesus speaking, Stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly, meaning judge righteously, so by the fruit. So like if you're sitting here saying, I love God, I'm a Christian, but then you treat people like garbage and don't follow any of his commands, clearly your actions are pointed in a different direction. And now when I say that, people like to get pissy and like have a whole moment and be like, well, we, 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 we naturally just want to sin. Yeah, that's fine. Like we all struggle with, well, it's not fine, but like we all naturally have inclinations towards specific sins. Um, there's sins that you struggle with that I don't and vice versa because we're humans in a world, in a fallen world. But... That doesn't make an excuse for a continual lifestyle of sin. There is a big difference between I struggle with something versus I consciously do it again and again and again. Example, I'm married. There would be a big difference if my husband saw a pretty girl and thought something a little bad and then stopped it at a thought versus him going out of his way to cheat on me. Like, there's levels, you know what I'm saying? Claiming to love God and then consciously on purpose living a lifestyle of sin is literally cheating on God. That, that's very different versus you fall into sin occasionally. Now, going back to the jewelry, I see so many people talk about how like piercings and stuff are evil and against the Bible. That is a Western view. The Bible literally says the opposite, actually. In both Ezekiel 16 and Genesis 24, nose piercings are a way of showing beautification and adornment to a woman. They're not talked about in a negative light. A good example of this is Proverbs 11.22, like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman who shows no discretion. Like, you might look modest, you might look like you know what you're doing, but your actions are proving otherwise, your heart posture is proving otherwise. It's like when Jesus talks about the Pharisees saying that they cleaned the outside of the cup but not the inside. They looked high and mighty and they fit the profile of like, these righteous men. 
but their hearts were far from God. And as much as people don't want to admit it, there could be a woman who's wearing more revealing clothes who has a more modest heart posture than a woman who is covered head to toe. I do want to specify and be very clear and stern on the point that as Christ followers, we have a duty to help one another. I work with the youth at my church. I'm not going to wear something I would wear like to go on a date with my husband to go to church to work with the youth. For one, because it's a bunch of teenagers and lust is like the worst thing they struggle with. And for two, I'm going to be around a bunch of 13 year old boys. Now, whenever I say that, people get upset and they'll be like, well, that's not your issue, though. That's on them. And agree, I agree. If you have a lustful heart, no matter what I wear, you have a lustful heart. Right now, not showing anything, there is someone watching this video thinking something nasty about me. But and however, I can only control what I do. And I have the ability and I have the duty as a Christian to try to help one another. In the same way, in the same vein, I'm not going to go to my grandpa's house with alcohol if I know that he used to be an alcoholic. Is it my fault that he used to be an alcoholic? No, but I'm not gonna put him in a situation where he could possibly fall back into a horrible addiction or fall back into sin. In the same way, if I know someone struggles with lust, I'm not gonna be wearing things that could heighten the chance of them falling into sin. That's simply being a decent human being. And we have gotten too far into this mentality that everything's on them and I can do whatever I want. No, I can't. Because being a decent human being means doing things you don't want to do sometimes to help others. And especially being a Christian, it's sacrifice. It's picking up your cross daily. It's not fun. No one wants to pick up the cross, but that's what it is. Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. You might be asking yourself like why people take that verse in Timothy completely out of context and why they have turned something that's actually a bigger issue into a smaller one. And Jesus sums it up so perfectly. Matthew 5, 27 through 28, Jesus speaking, he says, you have heard that it is said, you shall not commit adultery, meaning having sex outside of marriage. But I tell you, Jesus, I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery in his heart. So again, a heart posture. In this verse, Jesus is saying, people say, like, if you have sex outside of marriage, that's what lust is. Like, just the action. And God's like, no, if you have sex with someone in your mind, in your heart, you already committed lust. You committed a sin. So, like, the standard is so much higher, but we as humans, we like to justify our sin, right? We like to make sure, like, it's, it's not that bad, because, like, at least I didn't do that. No, you still sinned. You still sinned. So, like, I don't know why we try to make this hierarchy of, like, oh, he did that, but I only did that. No, you sinned too the same boat <laughs> and people do that with modesty so much like I can't tell you the amount of girls I've had tell me I'm a modest for like the makeup and crazy hair and then they literally have makeup in their profile picture and I'm like babe we were both wearing makeup how are you finna tell me makeup's bad when you're making me think of it so it's a heart posture and we like to create these levels of things to feel better than people and not to mention how that's completely anti-biblical and the complete and utter lack of humility. But it's just wrong. It's just wrong. Sin is wrong all the way around. And instead of trying to make these hierarchies or minimize the sin by making it only this one thing, almost every single time in the Bible it falls back to a heart posture. To reiterate my now eight minute rant, Modesty is a heart posture. If you are doing things with ill intention, doing things to look and to feel better than other people, then that is an issue. If you're doing crazy makeup and crazy hair just because you like it and you think it's fun, that is not an issue. You do not know how modest someone is by looking at them. As always, with all of that said, I love you very much. Talk to you later!